so now that I've talked about ways to give code to a thread to run it, let's talk about ways to pass parameters to a thread. And this actually turns out to be surprisingly tricky. And it's kind of funny when you first uh, look at the interface for thread, you're like, how do you, how do you pass parameters to it? It's weird. Um, but it turns out that you just have to know the, the patterns and the idioms for doing this properly. Why this appears hard at first glance is that the run hook method, the thing that actually starts doing the computation in a separate thread, takes no parameters. And that's true both for the run method on thread as well as the run method on runnable. So how do you get them to do something? Well, there's a trick. Uh, and the trick is to use one of two approaches. One approach is to essentially implement runnable, or you could extend thread for that matter, and then pass parameters to the constructor of the class that you're using to implement runnable or extend thread. So that's, that's kind of one approach. So let's take a look at that approach first. So as you'll see here, this example is from the, the case study GCD program we looked at before. And so it's going to have a, a field called main activity, which is an Androidism we need to be able to get the buttons to work properly. Then we're going to have a constructor, which is going to be passed an activity. And that'll be stored in the field here. You can see that's one of the jobs of the constructor to initialize the fields. And then when the run hook method gets called, when we start the instance of the thread that's going to run the GCD runnable, when we do that, it can then access the main activity that was passed into the constructor. And in this particular case, you can see it, it does this to print diagnostic messages to the user, letting them know what's going on. So that's kind of one approach. Here's what the code looks like when you actually use it with this model. Here's the main activity. This is the Androidism thing. We have a method called run runnable. When I click that button on the GUI that says run runnable, I've connected it to this method. This method turns around and makes a new thread. That thread will run a new GCD runnable, which is associated with this activity. That's what this is in this context. And you can see that that's what's used up here. So that's how we pass the activity into the GCD runnable so that it can be accessed when the thread runs in the background. So that's one way to do things. That's a very common way to do things. An alternative way to do this is to have some kind of setter method or methods in the class and then use those to explicitly set whatever parameters you want to have passed to the, to the computations that will be running in the background for the thread. In this particular case, this is a slightly different um, approach. This approach, unlike the previous approach where we extended random and implemented runnable, <coughs> In this approach, we're going to just extend thread. So there is no separate runnable. This is that other alternative way of giving code to a thread. So in this case, we're going to have two fields in the GCD thread class, one of which is the activity, which we had before, and the other which is a random number generator. And then we're going to define a couple of setter methods, one called set activity, one called set random. And those take in activity and the random number generator, respectively. And you can see that they do sort of some interesting and stylized behaviors. They will set the field to whatever the parameter is going to be. And then they also return this. And by returning this, we can do something called fluent interfaces. And I'll show you how that works in a second. It's a very popular programming style. In fact, if you're, if you're someone who've taken the uh, course on functional programming, you've seen this a lot, because functional programming libraries do this very frequently. But, but Object-oriented libraries do it now as well. So we can use this to chain methods together using the fluent interface pattern. And here's kind of what this is going to look like. Here's the run hook method for GCD thread. It'll print the activity. It'll use the activity to print some welcome message, some diagnostic. Generates a couple of random integers. And then here's where we use the fluent interface model. So we say new GCD thread. So that makes a new GCD thread object. But notice there's no parameters that are passed into the constructor. We just have a, a default constructor here. And then we say dot set activity. So the activity is set to this main activity. And if you look back here, you'll notice that set activity returns this. It returns the GCD thread. So then we can go ahead and chain that together with a call to set random on the same object, passing in the new random object. And that, of course, also is chaining by returning this. And so we can make a new thread that will end up 
being the result of calling new GCD thread to make a new GCD thread, calling set activity, set the activity to this, taking the result from that, calling set random on that, set the random number generator, and then taking the result from set random and setting that to be the thread reference that we're storing there. So that's a very common form of fluent interface programming. So you should get used to seeing that. If you program in other languages, you probably see that quite a bit as well. So that's the overview of how to pass parameters to a thread. You can see it's very stylized. It's, it's not built into the language per se, but it's a set of patterns or idioms you can use if you want to pass parameters to threads.